Gymnasticsville podcast is brought to you by Live Headphones. Welcome to another episode of Gymnasticsville. I'm Midnight Robin. Last week, we got an opportunity to interview NBC analysts for the Olympic Games, gymnastics Tim Daggett, and we had an opportunity to get his thoughts on the current landscape for NCAA gymnastics and his thoughts on UIC dropping their men's and women's gymnastics program. All right, Gymnasticsville, I'm here with Tim Daggett, 1984 Olympic gold medalist. Um, You've been involved with the sport, you know, in such a capacity, great capacity. What were your thoughts when we first heard about UIC dropping their program at the end of this year? Oh, uh, well, you know, I was devastated. Obviously, like anybody who's a gymnastics fan, you know, there are so few opportunities now for, you know, a ton of kids that are doing gymnastics, you know, from a very early age all the way up through high school, and, and there are very few places for them to go, and UIC was another place that uh, you know historically has always provided opportunity for these kids so I was devastated yeah so let's just talk about this a little bit because you know on a few shows ago I was talking like basically UCLA was like the premier program and then you know that program dropped for you guys you have <laughs> multiple Olympians gold medalists I mean how did how did you deal with that when that happened to you when it hit you know Yeah, I can't. I just got, you know, chills the wrong kind, you know, right now with you asking me that question because it was it was horrific. You know, Um, I don't know what more they expected from a program. Um, You know, what it came down to is, uh, you know, it uh, unintended consequences of Title IX is, is what I would say. And but I would say that we had done enough to warrant, you know, a program at UCLA, they dropped UCLA swimming at the same time that had, you know, a multitude of national champions and Olympic champions forever. So it's, uh, yeah, it was a really rough time for me personally. Yeah, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm sorry to hear about that because I, I look at UCLA as like essentially kind of what Oklahoma is doing right now. It's so dominant. So when a program like UCLA can drop their program, it just send shockwaves so I guess anyone can be on the chopping block at any time I mean well it can happen I think that uh, in today's world it, it it might be a little easier to um, resurrect or save programs like UIC uh, it, social media is such a, a powerful tool right now and it's uh, it provides an easier forum for so many people to get on board and try to help the situation, try to reach out to the administrators at UIC to make sure that this doesn't actually become a reality. Exactly. No, thank you. One more question. This is more on a personal note. Your son is on the team. Yes. Um, you know, how does that feel to kind of see your son, you know, taking over in your footsteps and doing a great job of it? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, he has loved gymnastics since he was a little kid. And, you know, I was excited to see, you know, all of the challenges that he overcame. Had a lot of injuries and is still fighting in there. Uh, uh, was part of the team that won obviously their fourth in a row and we came out to Oklahoma to uh, the football game on Saturday and they were awarded their their national championship rings it was it was pretty cool I'm, I'm, I couldn't be more proud of him as uh, a person uh, obviously a gymnast but mostly as a person yeah and last question so you know I like to use the uh, the example that now the Oklahoma team is almost like like the mecca of gymnastics like it was at UCLA. Do you see any similarities with that right now since UCLA doesn't have a program? Well, obviously, I mean, the dominance of OU has just been overwhelming. And, uh, you know, it doesn't look like it's going to change all that much in in the near future. (laughs) So, um, I mean, Mark does a phenomenal job at readying the athletes and making sure that, you know, when they go up, they they not just hit, but they they do one of their best routines of their lives when it counts most. So OU is is doing a phenomenal job. Awesome. All right. Thanks a lot, Tim. Thanks. All right. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. 
and live free and don't drop a beat with live headphones. Imagine walking around to the soundtrack of your life, having all of your audio needs with one pair of over the ear headphones. Imagine a workout that is intense and powerful. Now imagine having headphones that can truly keep up with that intensity, never having to worry about them falling off. Headphones that fight gravity, connecting you to the sound you choose. No need for a cell phone, no need for a secondary device. Live headphones are for athletes. They are lightweight, low profile, wireless, Bluetooth enabled, comes with onboard music storage, and most importantly, stay in place no matter what. You will never think about athletic headphones the same. Go to livvheadphones.com and use the code Gymnasticsville for free shipping. Live headphones, live free. That was Olympic gold medalist Tim Daggett, UCLA men's gymnastics alumni. His thoughts on the USC dropping their program. It was great running into Tim Daggett. It was definitely unexpected when we were at the ring ceremony. And I, he came into one of the workouts to watch still you guys practice. But I want to shift the focus back to UIC and to some of his comments when he said that it affected him on a personal level when UCLA decided to drop the men's gymnastics team and swimming, which had very high level of success at the university. And it makes you think, where is men's gymnastics going now? Where is NCAA gymnastics going now? In 1969, there were 212 men's NCAA gymnastics programs. 212 programs. Now, will UIC drop in their program? 15. In 1981, there were 179 women's NCAA programs. Now, there are 61. Programs are dropping at a significant rate. In the gymnastics community, we all need to not only wake up, because I feel like everyone has been has known about this drop in programs for the last 30, 40 years. I think now that the community needs to be more connected more organized in how we go about the solutions to change this pace. Because at this rate, it's only a matter of time. I mean, the rates aren't increasing, they're decreasing. We all know that when it comes to NCAA gymnastics, that is a key element to sustaining gymnastics in this country. A lot of children are looking, growing up, dreaming to be part of the NCAA program. And who knows how much longer we're gonna have it if we continue to drop programs. The change at USC will affect 11 female student athletes and 25 male student athletes. This is an exceptionally difficult decision for all of us. UIC Chancellor Michael Emeritus said in a statement, the reality is that the costs associated for varsity athletic teams to operate at a high level is rapidly rising with no signs of slowing down. UIC Athletic Director Jared Classy added in the statement, this is the most difficult decision I've had to make in my career as an athletic administrator. I know that it impacts many people who have invested much of their lives into UIC gymnastics and, and our entire athletic department. However, this was a move towards progress that needed to be taken. UIC said it would allow affected student athletes to transfer at any other school the university will also honor all scholarships. For the 2019-20 school year, UIC will offer the following 18 sports. Men's and women's basketball, men's and women's soccer, men's and women's swimming and diving, men's and women's cross country, men's and women's track and field, indoor and outdoor, men's and women's tennis, 
women's golf, women's volleyball, softball, and baseball. It's just it's just crazy to see other other sports, other Olympic sports that UIC is offering, but but no gymnastics. This change will right side the department for long term sustained success and bring UIC's total sports sponsorship from 20 teams to 18. The other nine members of the Horizon League sponsored an average of 18 programs in 2017, according to NCAA data. NCAA Division I schools that do not sponsor football, such as UIC, support an average of 17 teams. So how I'm looking at this, is that the league that UIC is in, which is the Horizon League, they are the only program, the only school within that league that is offering gymnastics. So when the administrators were looking into cost cutting because of rising expenses, they're looking at all the other Horizon League schools, and you know what they're thinking? They don't have gymnastics. Obviously, that that that's one angle that the administrators went through. So I think it definitely hurt UIC that there were no other gymnastics programs within the Horizon League. When you look at other 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 leagues within the NCAA. I mean, the Big Ten, I got to tip my hat off to the Big Ten because the Big Ten is still doing it right. The Big Ten kept their league intact. The Big Ten has a lot of great schools in the Big Ten. Illinois, Penn State, Ohio State, Iowa. They have a lot of great programs. Michigan, a lot of great programs in the Big Ten. And with their Horizon League, there's not many, there's not many other schools there. Charlie Nelson, head coach for the UIC men's gymnastics team, says we now have two goals. Continue to train like champions and have this decision reversed. If you'd like to voice your concerns to the UIC administration, here is that information. The UIC athletic director's name is Jared Classy. His email is GK. L A S S Y at UIC.edu. That's G Classy at UIC.edu. His office number is 312 996 2695. That's 312 996 2695. You can also contact the UIC Chancellor, Michael Emeritus. His email is chancellor at uic.edu and his office number is 312-413-3350. 312-413-3350. He also says, I would also ask you to contact your mainstream and alternative news media so that this unfortunate decision can be shared beyond the gymnastics community. So I think it's imperative everyone that that really wants to, you know, do their part and help save this program is to contact those individuals within the administration administration. Let them know how much gymnastics means to you. Let them know how much this program means to you. I think it's important that we all stand a united front as a gymnastics community. I don't want to have to spur out those numbers again, but in 1969, there were 212 men's programs, and in 1981, there were 179 women's programs, and there's currently 61 for the women and 15 for the men. So we got to find ways to keep the program going. I know fundraising is going to be obviously a very key very key to fundraising because they made this decision UIC is saying on record they made this decision because of the financial cost the rising financial costs so with all that in mind fundraising is key also 
some hashtags everyone should know about. The hashtag that's going around on social media is hashtag save UIC gym. So that's hashtag save UIC gym. And the other tag that they're using is hashtag flip the decision. And that's to make a video. So you do a flip and you talk about what the program means to you or that you support it. And the more hashtags, the better. So those hashtags are save UIC gym. And the other one is flip the decision. Let's do it. Let's do it, everybody. And that's a wrap. Next show, we're definitely going to talk a little bit more about the Pan American Championships. We're going to break down Team Canada. Yeah. Sam Zakutney, Renee, all those cats out there. It's going to be great. Pan American Championships starts this Friday. So we're going to be talking about that. World Team Selection Camp for Team USA is coming up. That's going down here in a few weeks. That's going to be imperative to see who's going to make the cut for this year's world team coming up in October. So that's all coming up. I'm Midnight Robin, Gymnasticsville, Voice of Acrobatics. See you next time. Better rather saying you have the practice for the challenge you're bringing on yourself. Cause believe me, it's hard when your mind gives up. You gotta speak.